Hello pet parents and welcome to another episode of Natural Pets TV. I'm joined by Dr. Ken Tudor, Dr. Liz Bales, and Dr. Patrick Mahaney. One of the interesting things that doesn't get discussed enough is senses, how they work for cats, the importance of them, and how we need to nurture them. Dr. Liz, can you touch on that? Yeah, absolutely. So cats, as we've, we've talked about, are, are predators. So they are highly sensory beings. And we think about the five senses, and I'll go ahead and start at the nose. So <laughs> cats have 15 times the sensory capability in their nose than humans do. And I've learned something recently that it's theorized that cats' sense of smell may be even a thousand times greater than a human's. Still not quite as good as some dogs, but they really engage in a big way with their nose in the environment. Important to know um, in, the, in, in the negative that we don't want to expose them to strong perfumes, candle, scented candles, spray deodorizers, that sort of thing. In, in particular, cats don't appreciate uh, citrus smells. So it's important to know that uh, uh, your perfume may be lovely to you, but to your cat, it might be extremely overwhelming. And on the pro side, we can really engage them in their environment with scent. So we can get them hunting around the house looking for food in a positive way by engaging that sense of smell. So what's your favorite sense? sense? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to just uh, uh, add a little bit more and, 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 and talk about you know, nasal senses and some of the things we do as cat owners that make no sense. Uh, <laughs> and that is we put the food bowl next to the litter box. Uh, and here's an animal whose olfactory uh, has a heightened olfactory sense, and I don't eat breakfast in my toilet. And you know what, I'm going to add to that as well, something that is really a great piece of information. If you, not only should you not have your food next to the litter box, but if you move the water dish away from the food dish, cats will actually drink more. Mm -hmm. So uh, one great tip is to use different water vessels around your house. You can do some high, some low, some that are uh, more like a small bowl, some uh, uh, water fountain, uh, a cup. They really enjoy water in multiple places in the house and definitely not in the same place as the food. I think um, I, I'm, I'm still stuck on smell. Smell, I think, is so important to cats, and smell is probably more important than sight in some sense. The smell of their food is much more important to them than how the food visually appears. Like, unfortunately, some food manufacturers put caramel color into certain foods to help to lend the appearance of real meat. What a lot of pet owners don't know is that caramel color contains 4-methylimidazole, which is a known carcinogen for humans. So it could potentially have carcinogenic potential for pets. And most pets, most cats eat the same thing day in and day out. So if they're eating a carcinogen day in and day out, you could in theory be predisposing your cat to cancer. So focus on the smell of the food and, and the food actually being real and not having it just be artificially colored to look like. Because the cat doesn't care what it looks like. The cat cares cat what it smells care. like and tastes like. Absolutely. And here Absolutely. are two new senses we can talk about <laughs> taste. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the nose because cats have a sense in their nasal area that humans don't have as developed. And that there's an organ at the roof of the mouth in the same area as the nose called the vomeronasal organ. And that detects something called pheromones, which are a chemical communicator that cats use to have nonverbal communication or non um, sound communication and it's incredibly important that for them as a way to perceive their environment for messages from other cats so if you have a multi-cat household that can really come into into play and in how your cats communicate if you have a single cat household you can actually influence that positively well both in a single and multi-cat household you can influence positively with synthetic pheromones that might help mm -hmm. to make your cat perceive the area um, in, a, in a calming way um, by using a synthetic pheromone. Yeah, no, and, and, and I'll, I'll jump on taste oh, yes. <laughs> and get off the you nose uh, because uh, Patrick brings up a good point. And, and uh, I do homemade diets for dogs, and, and people ask me, why don't you do them for cats? And it's, it's because of their sense of taste. It is much, much harder to get into the mind of a cat and find out what they will eat on a consistent basis. So I found it very, very difficult to please this audience, if you will. And I know Patrick is, is a, a big believer in, in uh, uh, raw or, or homemade uh, foods. And uh, how do you address that with, with, with your 
cat patients? Um, some of my cat patients like variety. Um, I like to give them options and every meal might be different or we might stick with a particular food for a, particular, for a certain amount of time and then change to something else just so they have that different option of something to eat. A lot of it depends on the actual health of the cat. If you have a cat with a specific health issue, I'm usually trying to get them eating and getting them eating consistently so changing the food up too much can be troublesome to the cat. But generally I like to give them variety so that they can experience different proteins and absorb nutrients too because just like we eat a variety of foods throughout the year. Sometimes it's seasonal, sometimes it's not. And with the advent of packaged foods, we can really eat any food anytime, anywhere. But cats really do benefit from having different different types of protein sources, different types of carbohydrate sources. We want to make sure we're giving them the appropriate vitamin mineral balance, of course, too, that suffices mm -hmm. their needs. So I like to have my feline patients An have variety. An extra layer there is, is uh, texture. Oh yes. So yes. cats uh -huh. can really have feeling, an ex feeling. <laughs> an ex feeling. We're now under uh -huh. feeling. They, they can have an exquisite sensitivity to texture. In fact, certain cats, if you you may have had a kibble that has different shapes in it, some cats can be so exquisitely sensitive to texture that they only want to eat one shape. Yeah. So, in their sense of um, feeling in their mouth, it can be really exquisite. Yeah, I see that with the cats that like pate canned food as opposed to the ones that like chunky and gravy. Um, yeah. it, because it's that palatability, that feel, uh, yeah. very little to do with the taste. With a sense of feel as well, litter box behavior so yes. often can correlate with what the cat is experiencing when they're in the box. Um, not only if they're being traumatized by something else that's going outside the box, but just how the, how the litter itself feels or how it smells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, your cat might have an aversion to the abrasive nature of certain litters. They might want something softer. So they could decide instead of going where you want them to go in litter box to go on your bedspread or go in your laundry basket. So always pay attention to making sure your litter box is clean so that there's not an offensive smell from urine and feces in there and hopefully not a chemical strong smell to the a deodorizer to the litter because that could turn your cat off but also make sure that they're comfortable with the substrate otherwise they're going to find another substrate that suits them better <laughs> that you won't like very much. <laughs> you won't like that at all. And, and that's going to be very individual with the with yeah. the cat because I've seen cats that do well on the the chunky litter if you will the traditional litter and those that have to have just sand you know purchased at, from a bag uh, at Lowe's. So uh, each individual cat is going to have to decide, and, and I think you bring up a good point. You've got to recognize that you need to reach out to your cat and find out what they like. And if you're up to going above and beyond and you really want to know what your cat likes, you can do a litter buffet. Yeah. You could actually have a several different litter boxes lined up and have different types of litter. Like you said, you could do a sand litter, you could do a clumping litter, you could pick different types and do, leave it out there and clean them the same with the same frequency for a week or two and your cat will tell you what their preference is. Now I also want to follow up on vision and hearing because those are also very important. So which one of you is going to give me a clear picture of their hearing? <laughs> Um, well, I think hearing is so important for cats because as predatory animals, they want to always be aware of what's in their surroundings that they can prey upon and also to be aware of what predators in the area too. So they're going to hear you when you come home and you open the, the door and, and they're going to hear noises, outside noises. If you have an apartment cat could alarm them and create stress. So their hearing is very sensitive. I can't, I don't know the exact like yeah, specifics I about either, it. But uh -huh. I do know that they hear at much higher frequencies and sounds that can be imperceptible to us and can be very affected by loud or sudden noises as well. So anytime you're, um, you're gonna have loud music or a party, you might even think about isolating your cat in, a, in an area where they're comfortable with all their needs met and, uh, and trying to get them away from too much noise. I think we have to remember also in the geriatric cat that things are going on in the brain in the hearing center. And even though we're e we can easily recognize deafness in dogs, in our, uh, our senior dogs, we may not recognize it as well in our senior cat. Mm -hmm. And some of the changes in behavior may be a result of a diminished hearing uh, due to the geriatric state. Yep. Now, how do cats see? Because I think that's a unique thing that is truly pixelated for cats. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the, the, the conventional wisdom that, that I was trained with is that cats, if we plug it, uh, plug electrodes into their eyes, do not see in distinct shapes and whatnot, but see in pixels. And, and that's probably a, a very um, uh, advantageous uh, for a predator. If you think about watching a, a, a series 
uh, on TV where they take and put pixels across a person's eyes. There's a lot of subtle movement. And if you can pick up that kind of subtle movement, it probably makes it easier to catch a butterfly or a lizard. Mm -hmm. And while they have a little bit better um, vision far away, their near vision is, is like you said, very pixelated and not, and not very good. So they rely on all their senses in the hunting process. Well, thank you so much and thank all of you for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV, the cat edition. If you want to keep the conversation going, we'd love to hear from you. You can do that in the comment section down below. And remember, you can always reach out to us at PetWorldInsider.com. To find out more information about our guests, you can find that about Dr. Ken Tudor at TheWellDogPlace.com, Dr. Liz Bales at NoBowlCat.com, and Dr. Patrick Mahaney at PatrickMahaney.com. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being a part of the process here at Natural Pets TV.